astronomers say they have found the first ring planet beyond our solar system, a super world with a girdle of halos 200 times bigger than Saturn's. Called J1407b, the giant has a disk of 30-odd rings which is so vast that had it been around Saturn, it would have dominated our night sky. Matthew Kenworthy of the Leiden Observatory said it'd be huge. You'd see the rings and the gaps in the rings quite easily from Earth. But what do we know about the planet? How did astronomers discover this planet? What makes this planet so special? And did astronomers find more of these planets? Keep on watching to find out more. So, what do we know about the planet? According to astronomer Eric Mamajek of the University of Rochester and his co-author from the Leiden Observatory in the Netherlands, the ring system that they saw circle the extremely young Sun like star J1407 has massive proportions, much larger and heavier than Saturn's ring system. A team led by Rochester's Eric Mamajek discovered the ring system in 2012, making it the first of its kind beyond our solar system. Co-author Mamajek says, This planet is much larger than Jupiter or Saturn, and its ring system is roughly 200 times larger than Saturn's rings are today, you could think of it as kind of a super Saturn. The ring system is made up of more than 30 rings, the largest of which is nearly the size of Earth's orbit around the Sun, according to a new analysis of the data. In addition, the astronomers discovered holes in the rings, indicating the formation of exomoons. An exomoon or extrasolar moon is a natural satellite that orbits an exoplanet or other non-stellar extrasolar body. It is inferred from the empirical study of natural satellites in the solar system that they are likely to be common elements of planetary systems. The majority of detected exoplanets are giant planets. Kenworthy says. The details that we see in the light curve are incredible. The eclipse lasted for several weeks, but you see rapid changes on time scales of tens of minutes as a result of fine structures in the rings. He added. The star is much too far away to observe the rings directly but we can make a detailed model based on the rapid brightness variations in the starlight passing through the ring system. If we could replace Saturn's rings with the rings around J1407b, they would be easily visible at night and be many times larger than the full moon. The researchers analyzed data from the Super Wasp survey, which looked for gas giants passing in front of their parent star. Eric Mamajek and colleagues discovered the young star J1407 and its unusual eclipses in 2012, speculating that they were caused by a moon-forming disk orbiting a young giant planet or brown dwarf. Direct observations with adaptive optics and Doppler spectroscopy were employed in a recent study led by Kenworthy to determine the weight of the ringed object. The light curve tells astronomers that the diameter of the ring system is nearly 120 million kilometers, more than 200 times as large as the rings of Saturn. The ring system likely contains roughly an Earth's worth of mass and light-obscuring dust particles. Mamajek puts into context how much material is contained in these disks and rings. If you were to grind up the four large Galilean moons of Jupiter into dust and ice and spread out the material over their orbits in a ring around Jupiter, the ring would be so opaque to light that a distant observer that saw the ring pass in front of the Sun would see a very deep, multi-day eclipse, Mamajek says. In the case of J1407, we see the rings blocking as much as 95% of the light of this young Sun-like star for days, so there is a lot of material there that could then form satellites. In the data the astronomers found at least one clean gap in the ring structure, which is more clearly defined in the new model. Kenworthy said. One obvious explanation is that a satellite formed and carved out this gap, the mass of the satellite could be between that of Earth and Mars. The satellite would have an orbital period of approximately two years around J1407b. According to astronomers, the rings are expected to thin out over the next few million years and eventually vanish when satellites emerge from the material in the disks. Mamajek explains, the planetary science community has theorized for decades that planets like Jupiter and Saturn would have had, at an early stage, disks around them that then led to the formation of satellites, however, until we discovered this object in 2012, no one had seen such a ring system. This is the first snapshot of satellite formation on million-kilometer scales around a substellar object. Astronomers estimate that the ring companion J1407b has an orbital period roughly a decade in length. The mass of J1407b has been difficult to constrain, but it is most likely in the range of about 10 to 40 times the mass of Jupiter. The researchers encourage amateur astronomers to help monitor J1407, which would help detect the next eclipse of the rings and constrain the period and mass of the ring companion. Observations of J1407 can be reported to the American Association of Variable Star Observers, OFSO. In the meantime, 
the astronomers are searching other photometric surveys looking for eclipses by yet undiscovered ring systems. Kenworthy adds that finding eclipses from more objects like J1407's companion is the only feasible way we have of observing the early conditions of satellite formation for the near future. J1407's eclipses will allow us to study the physical and chemical properties of satellite spawning circumplanetary disks. The astronomers expect that over the next millions of years, the rings will become thinner and thinner and eventually disappear once several satellites have formed. The astronomers estimate that the ring system object orbits J1407b in 10 years and has a mass of 10 to 40 times that of the planet Jupiter. Astronomers are now keeping a close eye on J1407b for the next ring eclipse, while the astronomers scour other databases for overlying ring systems. Kenworthy said now that we know what to look for, the search for such exotic exoplanets is a lot easier. Did astronomers find more of these planets? Astronomers have discovered the most Earth-like planet outside our solar system to date, an exoplanet with a radius only 50% larger than the Earth and capable of having liquid water. Using the ESO 3.6-meter telescope, a team of Swiss, French and Portuguese scientists discovered a super-Earth about five times the mass of the Earth that orbits a red dwarf, already known to harbor a Neptune-mass planet. This exoplanet is the tiniest ever discovered, taking 13 days to complete a full orbit. It orbits its star at a distance of 14 times that of the Earth from the Sun. Despite the fact that its host star, the red dwarf Gliese 581, is smaller and colder than the Sun, and therefore less bright, the planet is in the habitable zone, or the region around a star where liquid water may exist. Stefan Udry from the Geneva Observatory said, We have estimated that the mean temperature of this super-Earth lies between 0 and 40 degrees Celsius, and water would thus be liquid, he adds. Moreover, its radius should be only 1.5 times the Earth's radius, and models predict that the planet should be either rocky, like our Earth, or fully covered with oceans. Because of its temperature and relative proximity, this planet will most probably be a very important target of the future space missions dedicated to the search for extraterrestrial life. On the treasure map of the universe, one would be tempted to mark this planet with an X. But the catch is in that average surface temperature. Gliese 581 grams is locked by the tidal action, just like the moon in relation to the Earth, this planet always has the same side facing the star. That side is therefore constantly lit and is very hot, a few hundred degrees, while it is correspondingly cold on the dark side of the planet. But that is actually beneficial, claims Vogt. This anchoring ensures a stable climate. In the transition zone between light and dark, the region of eternal twilight, the temperature can be just right and stable. Emerging life forms have the ideal temperature for the selection, they just need to find the appropriate latitude in that transition zone. Two years ago, the same team of astronomers already found a planet around Gliese 581. With a mass of 15 Earth masses, similar to that of Neptune, it orbits its host star in 5.4 days. At the time, the astronomers had already seen hints of another planet. They therefore obtained a new set of measurements and found the new super-Earth, but also clear indications for another one, an 8-Earth mass planet completing an orbit in 84 days. The planetary system surrounding Gliese 581 contains thus no fewer than three planets of 15 Earth masses or less, and as such is a quite remarkable system. The discovery was made thanks to HARPS, High Accuracy Radial Velocity for Planetary Searcher, perhaps the most precise spectrograph in the world. HARPS is one of the most successful instruments for detecting exoplanets and holds already several recent records, including the discovery of another trio of Neptunes. HARPS is also very efficient in finding planetary systems, where tiny signals have to be uncovered. And we are confident that, given the results obtained so far, finding a planet with the mass of the Earth around a red dwarf is within reach. So, while technology keeps expanding and upgrading, there are many more interesting planets that have to be discovered and have already been discovered. Astronomers will keep on looking for more interesting planets and watch the already discovered planets. Maybe one day humans can find new life or new planets to live on. But what if we find a planet far away from Earth? How do we reach that planet? To find that out watch our other video about warp bubbles. So, what are your thoughts on the discovery of these planets? And do you think humanity will ever live on other planets than Earth? Let us know down below in the comment section.